Welcome to Building the Future, hosted by Kevin Horick. With millions of listeners a month, Building the Future has quickly become one of the fastest rising programs with a focus on interviewing startups, entrepreneurs, investors, CEOs, and more. The radio and TV show airs in 15 markets across the globe, including Silicon Valley. For full show times, past episodes, or to sponsor the show, please visit buildingthefutureshow.com. Welcome back to the show. Today we have Allison Dollar. She's an emerging technologies champion. Allison, welcome back to the show. Hello, hello. How are you? I'm I'm very well. I'm excited to have you back on the show. You've you've done the show a couple of times, and we've kept in touch, um, kind of every month or two, kind of since January. So I'm excited to have you back on the show. So welcome back. Thank you so much. I love to do this on a Friday because <laughs> it's always a signal we can knock off soon and. Maybe have a cocktail. Yeah, and you can head to the beach. I'm jealous. I will indeed. <laughs> so for people that don't know who you are, maybe do you want to give a quick background on yourself and uh, you know what you've kind of been up to, and then we'll kind of cover what you're doing now? Sure. Uh, well, it's a little counterintuitive. I actually started as a traditional liberal arts person. I have a okay. master's degree in English literature from the University of Virginia. Cool. And I, among my early jobs, was at uh, Film Commission and doing location-based stuff for film and television industry, production okay. and all that. And um, then I got a job job <laughs> with a publishing company, and fortunately, it was in the film and television trade publishing arena, okay. and then that's when I fell in love with all the emerging digital stuff that was happening uh, way back in the ancient days, and switching over from uh, linear kinds of things, particularly editing, to nonlinear digital modes, Right. and I saw right away the writing on the wall for the industry, that it was all going to go digital. And uh, very at that same time as when the web was born. Sure. So that is how old I am, <laughs> and um, and I and I knew right away. So I've been proselytizing about it ever since, and particularly interactive video. And I've done many startups in that arena of interactive video, streaming, interactive entertainment. You know, you name it: mobile games, all that kind of stuff. Sure. So, how and why did you? found the kind of ITV Interactive uh, Television Alliance. Yeah, so all of those kind of things. I had founded a bunch of stuff, uh, ETV World Conference and many other things I did for the National Association of Broadcasters, helped them launch cool. into multimedia. And uh, in the course of all that, of course, knew the players and the other champions okay. and proselytizers of this stuff. And we started the Interactive Television Alliance because it was just taking so long for advanced television and um, next-generation advertising and all of that to roll out okay. in the U.S. And we were all frustrated, and <laughs> we knew each other, and that's how that happened. So those were all Fortune corporations supporting the cause of uh, advanced television interactivity that includes both targeted advertising and all that kind of stuff in a B2B sense and also interactivity in terms of the consumer experience of having the locus of control shift to the consumer. And that's really what we're all about. So all those usual players that you might expect, the big uh, cable companies and satellite and advanced Madison Avenue brands who were um, enough progressive to understand that their world was shifting, all of them joined the ITA and have been involved one way or another, and we continue. A lot of that mission has been fulfilled. Okay. Uh, but we still do a lot of programming for other shows like NAB. I just uh, programmed the Future Tech track for NAB. Very cool. And we do stuff at CES, of course, and, sure. you know, all around town. So that's where that sits. But it crosses over, and the thing that's fun now is that, I would say, in the post-mobile focus of our industry, sure. so much is going on where things have truly converged. Uh, to use that old term, in, in a very new and exciting ways now. And what's going on, for instance, in um, VR and AR and AI is all being completely melded into the media and entertainment industry. And it's fun. It's good to see. Interesting. Yeah, no, that's fair. And then 
that kind of, I think, is a good transition to kind of what you're doing now and and your work with kind of startups because you work with some actually really cool and innovative startups. Do you want to talk about kind of what you're doing with them and, and maybe if you want to talk about a couple of ones that you do work with? Sure. I uh, Well, first of all, let me just talk about the climate here. I'm in Santa Monica, California, sure. which is Jealous. known as uh, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty great. <laughs> I have to admit, I mean, it does have the hazards of the, all of the sort of uh, phony L.A. Yeah. aspect does come in quite a bit. Uh, but, and the tourists. Uh, overall, yeah, <laughs> all, all that stuff. But it is really pretty here, But and, and also has been reinvigorated by technology sure. into being more relevant in terms of the, the venture uh, community. has grown a lot just in the last couple of years. So the startups that... I see because they're in LA, as you might know, there are a lot of um, green and other sectors, sure. right? Yeah. It's actually in, in many, and health is very big here too because of UCLA and USC and research foundations around Pepperdine. But um, I am interested in them in a theoretical way, but personally, you know, my love, of course, continues to be entertainment and media right. and video driven. Uh, experiences in particular. I love it when it crosses over. So for instance, um, I chair the Los Angeles Venture Association Digital Media Special Interest Group. So I program for the lava events in that sector. And Very this cool. year I did one on AI and there's uh, one called for instance, um, HIA Human Interactive Agent. Okay. And it's an avatar based that is entertaining, but also of course, has applications for medical. Interesting. So, for instance, um, the, the veterans are really loving to use that because it's more comfortable for them to talk to an agent avatar than humans, which can make sense if somebody has PTSD. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so, very much so. And, you know, yeah, so, so that's what I, uh, I'm liking is the melding of things. So, for instance, uh, Vault Comics yeah. is uh, going guys. really, really, really good. Um, and I think you interviewed them. Yeah, you, through you. It was your connection. You hooked me up, and it was a great interview. It actually aired, so people can go check it out online. But Oh, over, oh yeah, so I'll have to go see. So the thing is, the reason I bring them up, obviously um, they're great and very interesting and award-winning and all that stuff, but young company, young guys, but the whole model is to, again, be uh, converging and and spreading into other platforms and distribution sure. forms, right? Yep. So they're being their stuff's being turned in their intellectual property being turned into games. They've got deals with VR firms. They are being made into feature films. Which is very cool. And then and then vice versa. Sure. They are taking some other stuff like from novels and TV and making them into comics. Very cool. So this is the I, I like them because they are exemplify the mix of what happens here, which is that everyone has, and honestly, it's been frustrating for decades, literally decades, we've all been proselytizing that we have to get out of these silos, right? And not just in terms of let's play well with each other, but in terms of the business model. Because the business model is never going to work the way old way with everything being so fragmented, not just platforms, but the proliferation of the amount of content out there. Sure. So the technology is driving and helping all that be monetized in new and different ways. Very exciting. Um, some, some other stuff like um, AR Wall, which is um, a new production tool that uses augmented reality to actually make things a little more efficient than traditional compositing green screen and also, of course, can be experienced as an augmented um, experience Interesting. Um, by, the, by the consumers, too. And uh, a bunch of other things like that that I advise, like a face recognition company. Oh, interesting. Uh, of course, since same thing. It has applications that are already globally used for, um, let's just say, security with a capital S <laughs> in terms of, you know, homeland security, sure. government, police, all that, but also that has a digital signage uh, app com- uh, component that's an application for um, targeted advertising, right? Right. It can scan who's in the room and say, okay, it's mostly um, young girls around 
18 years old and send them ads that fit that demographic. For Interesting. Instance. Yeah. Very cool. So, yeah. So what types of services do you provide these startups? Because I, I think in a lot of cases, you, you work with startups that are kind of at a bunch of different stages in their kind of history. Fair to say? It is, it is fair. And, you know, unfortunately for me, in terms of my own financial well-being, sure. I love the early, early, early stage. Sure, okay. Most people that have my experience won't touch those kind of companies because they're like come back when you have your money yeah but if it's a cool thing i and i think that's why i referenced my background more coming liberal arts versus traditional mba type of person right is that if it captures my imagination and certainly you know i'm not saying we don't evaluate the size and scope of the addressable market or how well the team knows what they're doing and technical expertise and all that sort of stuff so i'm not saying that I discard any of those um, criteria, but I do see things that are uh, future looking in the sure. applications and whether they're going to be useful or not. And I have been borne out to be right most of the time. Now, I have been really early. Interesting. <laughs> so many times been too early, but <laughs> I've always been correct that, yes, the market's going to head that way. So I do corporate strategy. I help them package. I get them all kind of spit spot up um, to ready to raise money and to go to market. And then depending, I will do, of course, make introductions since I've been around so long and business development in that respect and help them plan their marketing um, strategy. Because a lot of uh, folks, I notice, especially the technology driven, they love to save all the marketing and PR to last, which is a huge mistake. Interesting. And they think it's often just icing on the cake. And I don't agree with that. Yeah. Interesting, because well, you got me also the the guys from uh, Differactive, which was interesting too, right? Like their technology and kind of what they're doing. Yeah, it's a you know sort of Pinterest for video with uh, with a, using a lot of um, jump to B roll and pause and bookmarking. It's a really interesting way to do that kind of thing, and that's something that's been tried many times, and others have failed because they're not doing the interface in a simple enough way, and these guys, I think, are really getting there, really nailing it. And, I, and you know, I would ha also, honestly, the thing that I still have the frustration is, and I think that we alluded to it last time we spoke, was the attitude toward the raise. I still have a lot of frustrations with the investor outlook on things. I think it's getting a little more um, creative than it used to be, but it's still the case where you find people doing a raise for two million, and it's called a seed. Right. Interesting. Right? You know, yeah, so yeah. everything's gotten inflated, and the bar to reach to get the money in terms of the benchmarks of head and and uh, the client base and all of that is just gotten raised, 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 and still money sits on the sidelines. Interesting. And I I just don't. Um, I don't think it's good for our economy, and I don't think it's actually, and you know, they can all protest all they want, but I don't, I still don't see a lot of, um, of the just traditional VCs that are very, to me, creatively interesting. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. It's always been weird to me when you, I, I talk to investors sometime on the show, and they're always Oh, I'm an early stage investor. Yeah, yeah, but you're like, okay, but what does that mean? Do I have to be profitable first or do I need a million dollars in revenue? Most of the time, it's, well, you need to be generating income. Sometimes it's over a million dollars and you're like, is that really early stage? Right? So Yeah, so then it's basically, you know, inflated friends and family or yeah. going around to this all these private equity groups. And then it really then remains such an all an insider's game. Yeah, it's and, interesting. And it is a game, and they yeah. don't realize it's actually other people's livelihood. Yeah. And and I see many things languish and not come to market that actually would have been to the benefit of society. Sure. And uh, you know that just makes them all uncomfortable because they think it's too squishy, and you know, I'm like, well, you know, we are, we are part of a. The economy is 
an engine, but it's not the only engine of the human race, you know? Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's like, interesting. Do we want to get stuff done or not? I don't know. Well, uh, it's a conundrum. Yeah. Why wouldn't you make a month 30 or 50 or maybe even $100,000 investments in, even if it's just that to me, seed money, right? And then yeah. see where that goes. And like the person you're investing in could probably do that part time. They don't necessarily need to, um, proof of concept full time, right? Like maybe not always, but it, it's interesting, right? So like, why don't you take your million bucks and divide it into $50,000 chunks? You have a way better chance of being successful and getting your money back than just putting a million dollars in one company. That's my opinion. Yeah, well, I, there there are some, there is some math against doing that, which I understand that too. But honestly, and again, they, you know, this is my personal opinion. Sure. I think there's a, still a lot of ego involved in these things mm. and a lot of other elements where, by which they make decisions, which they claim is some method, and I know firsthand is not. Sure. It, it strikes them. And that's why a lot of times they're out as, well, if I believe in the founder. <laughs> yeah, interesting. I've heard a lot of that more. And I was like, uh-huh, Okay. What does that mean? Yeah, but, um, interesting. But I, it is changing, to be fair, a little bit. I do think, though, it it's an interesting notion. My next one for Lava, actually, I, so I did eSports, I did AI, big data for media. I've done, in terms of my Lava events this sure. year, and some other cool stuff. I had that did an AR, VR for location-based entertainment, typical kind of things. But my last one for is going to be called... Um, Wide World, Small Planet, Doing Well by Doing Good. And Interesting. And have uh, philanthropic investors and cause-related marketing platforms because they've all been getting funded lately. And, uh, like, I invited CauseCast. And, yeah, and, sure. Uh, right, a bunch of those folks. So that's going to be interesting to see because the brands all have causes, just like the celebrities do, that sure. they um, – donate and they participate in and all that kind of thing. I mean, Ben and Jerry's has been way out in front, for instance, and some of these other kinds of uh, household name brands, Johnson & Johnson, they all have some sort of giving uh, programs that they do. So, and there's, and there's money yet for them. That's the thing. It's not just all, oh, we're going to do good works and sit around and waste a bunch of money. There's actually the model proved to work. In terms okay. of driving sales. Interesting. And, uh, you know, and to, to some degree, even uh, Nike's recent campaign with Copernic, you know, yeah. um, that's the same thing. They've taken a philosophical stand that has helped them actually drive business and some, not that they needed extra awareness, but uh, all these things, that is another C trend that is converging again with, I think the ultimate expression of um, the notion of personalization of media, right? Right. All of this fragmentation, these millions of really, if you count apps, millions of platform options for distribution, all of this sort of stuff comes down to the ultimate personalization is what do you believe in? Interesting. What do you care about? Who are you as your identity? And so then the, now brands understand that it's like an ex, using that technology as an extension of people being able to express themselves. And so you have, even with, for instance, 3D printing and everything else, an ability to always be completely catering to down to a very minute level of the individual and targeting them with ads as well as whatever programming it is that gets niched out. I mean, look at what happens within Netflix and uh, yeah, Hulu and Amazon, right? It's very niched. Yeah. Um, and then it's uh, tied to these brands and sponsors. Interesting. In a similar way. Yeah, that's interesting. So I, I, you kind of mentioned it, but I want to talk a little bit more about your um, involvement with kind of uh, LAVA, and the Los Angeles Venture Association. You mentioned you do a bunch of events, but and you're kind of in the digital space, but what exactly do you guys kind of do there, and, and how did you kind of get involved with that? Well, the Los Angeles Venture Association has been around a while. Okay. Um, and I honestly don't remember how I got involved, other than that I worked with startups for a long time and sure. been a champion, and I know the guys and everything. 
you know, that they, they have a lot of the big venture companies in town, and they foster, and then other people join, of course, member regular members, and some right. of whom may be startups and want those introductions. And they do uh, that kind of programming. For instance, there's something coming up next week called Lava at the Beach. Okay. And a bunch of the VCs will be there. And then a bunch, and they'll have a round robin. Is usually how they do it, where the VCs are pitched. Okay. Or they do like a speed dating or that kind of thing. Got you. And then there's, and then within that, there's different uh, interest groups that. So I do the digital media one. There's one on green. There's one on health. Right. Um, like that kind of thing that are just real specific for the programming throughout the year. Interesting. But they have workshops. They have an entrepreneur uh, um, coaching and things like that that a lot of us participate in for early stage companies. Sure. No, that makes sense. So I- I'm curious to get your thoughts on – what do you kind of see – Do you, like what? how do you see the kind of the, the big kind of space? Because TV to me is kind of an interesting kind of thing. I still have kind of traditional cable at home, but I also have YouTube TV, right? And I spend more time watching that than kind of traditional cable. My, my wife likes the some of the traditional stuff partly because of certain shows are just on that and that aren't kind of on some of the streaming services yet. But where do you kind of see the space going? Because it seems to – start at least kind of adopting some of the kind of newer technologies, especially now that people are cutting the cord, right? Yes. Well, that's always been at the heart of the question of what is the future of television and do you define it as just broadcast over-the-air television? Right. You know, used to be, if you remember, there was even a distinction between TV and cable. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, I remember those. <laughs> and yeah. nobody knows. No, it's those consumers never care how it gets to their house except when they have to pay the bill or if yeah, there's a technical fair. problem. Yeah. So now uh, some of the cord cutting was sort of offset by the fact that the bundles have been amended so that um, – you're still getting other things over the air anyway if you have or OTT over the top, which okay. is more uh, from the cloud, right? Right, yep. Um, <clears throat> if you have a smart television. Sure. So the, the key is really more question to ask is what's happening with advertising? Okay, interesting. So there are so many different ways for advertisers to target and reach and various individuals but still how do you get the mass market now that it's been eroded right so i think that what's going to end up happening is that the big players they've got deep pockets yeah they're just going to keep expanding their services right now they're kind of coasting right and i similarly i pay a huge amount of money honestly because i haven't bothered (laughs) i have added a lot of things i mean i pretty much have everything i'm like got you you know, everybody sends me stuff for one thing, sure. right? So yeah, I got yeah, yeah. Roku, this and that. Um, <laughs> there, so a lot of that will continue to consolidate. And I think, too, at the same time, the consumer, just the pushback of wanting to be able to have use that back channel, which is really the actual definition of interactivity, having the back channel. In other words, if you um, – think it would be more like the internet where you can make a choice and it signals back to bring you what you want. So sure. video on demand is a certain mod of that, click to buy, like any of those kind of things. Um, that demand's not going away, and there's actually no way it's ever going to go back. Interesting. So, the, so well, it's going to be interesting to see, and that's why you've seen all like the AT and T Directv merger, yeah. and all these other the slated mergers, and what happened was uh, Time Warner and Spectrum, um, the new Spectrum out of that uh, other merger, and all that kind of stuff is happening like very rapidly, and some of these new technologies are probably not win the least subsumed. But back to the other point about the, some of these Wall Street thing. Interesting. You know, they're all wanting to find the next Facebook, the next Google, sure. and this and that. And they're thinking that they're going to get some TV play that's going to be like that. And I just don't, I don't see it. 
Yeah, uh, there might be an application that's huge and it ends up being a billion dollar company, but in terms of like complete game changer in I not and I'll be very conservative. I'll say, you know, in the next five, seven years. Okay. I don't I don't see that being the case. Yeah, interesting. Because I always just kind of thought that it seems to be just I just want to talk at my remote or my phone or something, and I don't really care if the content comes from Netflix or Hulu or ABC or any channel, HBO. Just play it. I want to talk at it and say, like, play this episode of this show and just sort it out. That right. Just... Well, so search and navigation is, like, the key, key, key that everyone has found. The larger players have not solved yet. Yeah. The cable like, ridiculous. So I've obviously Google and Alexa and everything, they are all of those players are closer to being able to do that. Again, this is what I'm saying, the personalization yeah, aspect interesting. is really the key thing. But on top of it, though, you do have newcomers. Like here's another one that I buy. It's called Scenic. And they okay. uh, offer to be able to watch together in real time live with the very low latency on the video of your faces talking to one another. Interesting. So social TV, social shopping on TV, sure. like, and where AR comes into this, that's where all the frontiers are. Yeah. But they are going to be there so rapidly. Yeah, So rapidly. And so counterintuitively to, I think, what a lot of folks in my industry are saying, I think actually think that the living room is going to come back to being very important because once the reason that the living room experience went away is because everyone wanted a personalized experience and you know the other generation that's kind of phone addicted yeah was turned off yeah interesting but even there some of those younger people are like oh we're, do, we're too much on our screens. You know, there's these whole sub-movements of, away from that toward yeah. real-life experiences and community-based things. So when those things are joined together in the home or in other event spaces, when it's experiential, maybe with a shared AR thing or something like that, or even just watching a sporting event, as in the case that Scenic is doing in the U.K. with um, – with uh, football, with soccer, yeah, sure. um, you know, many exciting economic models <laughs> Interesting, yeah. can come to the fore. So I think that all is going to happen much faster. That part will happen much faster sure. than we think. What, yeah. about, what are your thoughts on kind of the portrait TV? I've read some thoughts that some companies or, or some apps are kind of, you know, going to actually record full episodes of, TV or whatever, actually in portrait mode because that's how most of the time we use our phone. You don't have to turn it to landscape. What are your thoughts on kind of that? Well, uh, this is the thing. Whatever, whatever we envision or want, okay, we end up making. In- yeah. Okay. Fair. Interesting. I mean, and I would say overall technology in general. I like. Why are there hoverboards? Okay. Right. Sure. Yeah. Or. Any, this is, again, just to back this, I know this is a very far-ranging conversation. No, it's Philosophically, good. again, I would say, in my opinion, I think that human beings that just cannot help ourselves. We dream stuff up, uh-huh. and then we build it. And, yeah. you know, sometimes it gets funded in a big way, and sometimes, no, it doesn't. Interesting. Like, for instance, the other lava thing I went to the other night these early stage companies that are coming out of the research uh, labs here, mm-hmm. um, the academic research labs, they've got you know little devices that they're working on toward detecting certain kinds of cancers and sure. like all kinds of stuff that are gadgets and gizmos and advanced ways of using SaaS platforms and other ways to parse things out and even in terms of workflow for all this big data loads that we are all generating, all of that stuff is happening so quickly. Um, so I think any of those things that you've got the small phones that are coming back into vogue because yeah. everyone's like, well, I don't want to carry around my computer, basically what these big phones are, yep. to, and yeah, right? So yep. any kind of little teeny niche market is going to be filled. Interesting. Because the demand is so high. 
Yeah. And uh, TV in general is just just following suit. It's like, okay, everything that was ever in text is going to be basically transformed into video and animation. Like I think pretty much everything, all all our records eventually, all of that, are eventually going to be accessed through very different kinds of interfaces. They're going to be represented graphically. Interesting. Because you know that's how we we experience the world now. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, you're right. Because even just talking to some of the other people that have had kind of through you and 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 Sarah. Um, you go, like they're basically taking the archive of even footage that was shot decades ago and putting it online and or on regular cable and people are loving it, right? What does it matter if you watch a game show that was recorded 30 or 40 years ago? Who cares? It's still great. Well, and also if even if it's if it's uh in the more recent history but still pretty old but still digitized enough, yeah. then you also are recutting things so that as you know you have holograms yeah you have, or even just mo- more prosaically you just you just edit in things that were not there sure. i just saw this one uh, uh other interesting startup that's up in burbank you can just in this version you put the coke can in and that version you put the jack daniels bottle in right yeah sure you just pop it in there and it's all full of Full video, full frame. Yeah, no, that's that's quite interesting. So we're going to be at the Media Excellence Awards in January. How did you get involved with that, and uh, what what exactly is it? Well, it originally started with a mobile focus, sure. um, and, of course, that has expanded to include everything else that is also in that mobile universe, like VR applications and things like that. Uh, I guess I was invited to help decide what were the good categories early on. Gotcha. And obviously the founder, Sarah Miller, and I are friends. Sure. So we all were in um, social groups, <laughs> for Fair want enough. of a better term, <laughs> within the industry. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things that just grows from there when – you get a lot of good big brands and people that are submitting and participating. So it's another case where it ends up being fun to see how from year to year the different trends and what are submitted or not and and who shows up or not and all that kind of thing. Sure, because it's the 11th year. So you guys have been or you've been involved in this thing since kind of the beginning. So it's been a yeah. long kind of journey since to the walk. Beginning. Yeah. I know, but you know, it's gone really fast, as in so many other things in life. <laughs> sure, yeah, interesting. So, like, once you see, I'm like, oh yeah, eleven years, okay, uh, yeah. Well, it it is. I think you know, it's always a testament to certain things, like mobile in particular, where anything that's introduced that seems so novel, we're very quick to become habituated to them. Yeah, interesting. Right? And yeah. interactivity in general is like. Now, and this is honestly an issue with uh, ITA, it's like it's not a novelty to say, okay, you can determine what and where and when to watch your video. Yeah. But it, it actually was a novel thing at the turn of the century. Yeah. Uh, so, and similarly with the MEAs, it's interesting to see some years it's tons of these certain kinds of apps. Yeah. And in other years, it's these other kinds of um well, for instance, right now, what's really big, and also a, a, one of the lava events that I did was all on um, emergency alerting, warning networks, and all that kind of stuff, because that's getting transformed by technology as well. So some years in MEAs, we have like a lot of utilitarian kinds of things, like for weather and traffic or right. other kind of health care and crisis. And the one that I did at lava... Um, was basically like how high tech can come to the rescue in cases of disaster and, and um, corporate resilience and everything. So if you think about the next generation of Amber Alerts or yeah. weather or any course terrorism, all the yeah. things that happen, uh, the emergency broadcast systems being updated. Yeah. And part of the push is for the ATSC 3.0 standard to be used better toward that because the standard's been rolled out. And it allows, again, a back channel. 
sure. so that there's more data that can go back and forth and all that kind of thing. Yeah, so, interesting. That's all con- connected. Yeah, well, and especially probably you've even probably seen some stuff kind of come and go and then kind of come back again, maybe in a different way. But people have been, for example, kind of some 3D stuff or even some early kind of VR and AR stuff, you have probably, or AI stuff, sorry, um, you've probably seen that kind of come and go, even just being involved in the industry for so long, right? Oh, for God's sake, yes. I mean, especially VR. Yeah. I mean, VR has, I've seen, this is the third wave of VR. Yeah. Now, of course, technically speaking, it's all much, much more advanced. But yeah. Yes, in terms of what's hot or interesting and people are into it. I think what is different this time is that the brands understand it for the location-based entertainment aspect of marketing. Yeah. Those two things uh, converging, they are now putting real money into that uh, because they have to because – Right, there's no 30s and 60s anymore in the same way sure. in terms of the mass reach all the, all the time that there was. So they have to look at those budgets and say, where else into digital can they go? Not, there's only so many apps you can force people to, to uh, put on their phones, right? Yeah. And there's like there's always a limited real estate at some point. So they're gonna it's like water wherever the opening is, the money will flow in, and that's where it is right now. But yeah, I, mean, I had a VR client really way early in the, in the 90s. Interesting. And I do think it's interesting too, is like even, again, entertainment sort of the leading edge of the wedge many times with this stuff, and then it sort of settles into other applications, like I was saying, like medical or even sure. just within the industry. AR wall really is a production tool. Interesting. So... So what do you mean by production tools? Like, so how does somebody use it to actually make something? Well, the studio uses it okay. because they, right? They, you set it up and then the way that it, uh, I'm trying to think a simplified way to say it. Yeah, it's hard it's to almost like do, yeah. It's almost like creating the, the 3D space in real time and that's being captured in real time. Okay, like interesting. The sensors, you know, it's like, form of compositing but in 3d in in a um you know regular stage situation. yeah interesting okay yeah, yeah i i kind of know what you mean it, it sounds how they kind of shoot those video games person kind of in a suit hooked up to uh a yeah computer. you don't have to do any yeah, of that stuff but yes it is related to yes it is related to green screen technologies and sensors and all of that is it is a cuz kissing cousin of that kind of thing very cool but it, but that, I mean, that's part of their secret sauce. It's, it's much more fluid and organic and um, efficient. Makes sense. No, very cool. So, Allison, we're kind of coming to the end, but maybe let's close with mentioning where people can get more information about uh, all the stuff you kind of mentioned and all the stuff you're involved in and if people want to actually reach out and work with you. Uh, yeah, they can just probably the fastest is either uh, through LinkedIn, just drop me a note in or um, – Allison Dollar at gmail dot com. It's A L L I S O N Dollar, just like the money, all one word at gmail dot com. And uh, yeah, happy to hear from people always. Very cool. Well, Allison, I really appreciate you again taking the time out of your day to be on the show. And I know we'll keep in touch because we've kept in touch for the last little while. And uh, have a good rest of your day. Well, you too. And I would say likewise. Yeah, I'm <laughs> a big fan of your show. And anybody who's got interesting stuff should go and talk to Kevin. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thanks again. We'll talk soon. Okay. Bye. Okay. Happy Friday. Thanks you too. Bye. Thanks for listening. Please visit our website at buildingthefutureshow.com to join the free community, sign up for our newsletter, or to sponsor the show. The music is done by Electric Mantra. You can check him out at electricmantra.com and keep building the future.